<clears throat> Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is November the 29th and we're continuing our readings in the book of Ezekiel, the prophecy of Ezekiel and chapter 39. He continues to prophesy regarding Russia. The Lord will bring them from the north, but he will scatter them on the mountains of Judea. He will break their weapons of war. The Israelites will use their weapons for fuel for seven years. A huge valley in the north of Israel will be where he will bury the dead of Russia. And men will search for the bones of the army and they will set up a notice so that it can be buried in the valley of bones. The Lord will call on the carrion to come and eat the flesh of the northern army. And in the 25th year of the captivity, in the first month and the 10th day, on that day, the Lord brought Ezekiel in a vision to the land of Israel. He sees an angel with a surveying line and a measuring rod standing in the gate of the city of Zion. Then the angel measures the wall of the city, and then he measures the gate of the city. And then he went up the stairs into the eastern gate to measure the threshold. He then measures the chambers on each side of the gate. He continues to measure everything, the windows, doorways, the gates. He measures the pavement, the archways, the side rooms, the posts. He measures the tables on which sacrifices will be prepared. He measures the altars. Then Ezekiel finds that Zadok, Zadok is, anoint, is appointed to sacrifice to the Lord. All of this was a vision of the temple of the Lord, which will be erected to the Lord in the Messianic kingdom. <clears throat> There's just a few things I want to point out to you as I've been reading it today. Let me go right back to the beginning. Um, uh, he says, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. Now, uh, Gog, Meshech and Tubal are the Russian nation. They are the Rushes. Um, he says, I will turn thee back and leave but a sixth part of thee, and I will cause thee to come from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and I will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand so there's going to be a an invasion of um, Gog and Magog uh, but this is Gog he's talking about here um, and Meshach and Tubal they will come from the north now north of Israel is not Assyria north of Israel is um, Russia and it is Russia that will come and they will come with two weapons they will have the spear and he will have the arrows and we're not quite sure in in, in our day quite what that means um, but it's very interesting all the things that the Lord says about them he's bringing them into the land of Israel that he might destroy them there and they will burn the weapons and the shields and the bucklers the swords and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears they will burn with fire seven years now how that's going to happen i've got no idea so that they will take no wood out of the field neither cut down any out of the forests for they shall burn their weapons with fire and and they shall <coughs> And they shall spoil those that spoil them and rob them that rob them, saith the Lord God. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will give unto Gog a place there for graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers of the sea of the east. And it shall stop the noses of the passengers. And there they shall bury Gog and all his multitude. And they shall call it the valley of Haman Gog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them that they may cleanse the land you see having dead bodies exposed to the sun is something that can defile the land and so the lord says that they're all to be buried but it will take seven months to bury this army that will come and then later on in verse 17 the lord says speak to all the fowls and assemble themselves because they're going to come 
and they're the carrion and they're going to come and they're going to eat all the dead that will be there we see this in other passages of course we know that um, what's very interesting from this from these few passages is that uh, there seems to be an order of these end times events I mean, for example, the first thing we have is the invasion of um, the north and the south um, to Israel, and the Lord will destroy them. But before that, there will be the spiritual restoration of Israel. <clears throat> and then after that, it appears, there will be the building of the Messianic Temple. And in verse 21 he says I will set my glory among the heathen and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid upon them so the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward and the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trans trespassed against me therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies so fell they all by my by the sword um, and and it's very interesting we get right the way down uh, now in the next chapter we have the beginning of what I call in builders terms a specification now a specification is um, a general description of a building it's a builders term and it is a description of the building in in its overall um, man final manifestation so it will list all of the rooms and it will list their sizes and it will list the the all the um, the appropriate details in fact my password is a strange verse today <laughs> it's verse 49 the very end of our reading today let me read it to you it says the length of the porch was 20 cubits and the breadth 11 cubits and he brought me by the steps whereby they went up to it and there were pillars by the posts one on this side and the other on that side now let me ask you something is this messianic temple a fiction is it something that is going to be real in the future? Well, the answer for me, it's absolutely indisputable. It will be a real building. There would be absolutely no point in giving a whole chapter here describing the windows and the doors <laughs> and the porches and the size of the rooms and the size of the window and the shapes of the window and the size of the pillars and uh, even even what the shape of the pillars will be absolutely no point in doing all of this if it were not describing a real building and uh, in, in verse 33 it says and wherein there were hooks a hand broad fastened round about and upon the tables was the flesh of the offering some people say of course there will be no sacrifice in the millennium because Christ the one sacrifice has been offered forever well you see that's making a misunderstanding not all sacrifice was sacrifice for sin the Passover was not a sin sacrifice and the worship offerings were not sin sacrifices the atonement was not a propitiation we need to understand the differences between the different sacrifices that the Lord had in the old covenant and we need to understand the difference between the sacrifice of Christ for sin and the sacrifices of the old covenant and also the sacrifices that will be known in the new covenant clearly there will be a priesthood and the function of a priesthood is to offer sacrifice um, and that's what is so clearly laid out in this chapter well I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow have a great day God bless you. Bye for now.